Hi everybody, this is Beach Cricket. There's little Riley. Hi Riley. Hey dear. <laughs> My sweetie. You're so sweet. And Roxy's over here. What you doing, Rox? Yeah. She's gonna come over here. You gonna say hi, Roxy? Yeah, good girl. Yes, I love you. Anyway, we just got up, got dressed, and I'm gonna make some coffee. And then we're going to do a project together because I promised you a project and I'm pretty good at my promises. Anyway, let's get the coffee started. Let's get this day started. And hopefully we'll have a good time and you'll enjoy this one. All right. See you in a few. There we go. We got to start off with some hot water to make some coffee. Okay, and I like the Starbucks French Roast Dark. Gonna start with that this morning. Ooh, that smells so good. Mmm, wish we had Smell-O-Vision so you could smell it. Okay. Put a little couple scoops in there with the filter and the coffee cup. Pour the water in there and we're good to go. Yay! That's going to be yummy. I'm ready for this coffee. Good morning, everybody. So I got my cup of coffee, drinking it, and it's really good. Mmm. Love it. I know a lot of y'all like to start your day off with a good cup of coffee. I either like the coffee or I like hot tea, so either way, it's really good for me. So, what am I going to do in this video? This is a hint. I am going to show you guys how to make some jewelry. And this is the fancy kind that, um, let me show you. Like this one. This is a double strand beaded bracelet that I made and I'm going to show you how to do that. I also made a matching necklace there. I like doing this stuff. It's fun. I promised you I'd show you so that's what's going to happen today. We're going to make some jewelry with leather. I like using leather. The only thing with leather is you've got to make sure that your leather string is tiny enough to fit through like a six millimeter bead because that's what I prefer. I prefer that size. It's just, I like the tininess of it. Once in a while, I'll throw a bigger, you know, bead in there to make it, you know, accentuate the uh, beauty of the creation. <laughs> but um, that's normally what I do. So that's what this is all about right here. So you're going to learn how to do this. Okay. Now what you see here is a project I just finished and um, I love it. The reason why I made it is because I hardly ever had any red jewelry and I like to have um, red jewelry to accentuate the uh, different clothes that you wear, you know, like for Valentine's Day coming up. This would be a really pretty thing to, um, to wear with a, a pretty red dress or even a black dress, you know, anything to complement it. And I want to point out this. This is actually a button. So is this other one. You can use these. Let's see here. Just turn it over. This is what you do. You can string a button through and knot it and you can have a little catch so that you don't have to do the traditional way and make it unique. And then what you do when you're finished beating, you tie a little knot there and you have a gap where it can string through to hold it and tie a knot on the end of it. And then you can add a little embellishment right here on the end to uh, make it even prettier. So <clears throat> the bracelet is the same concept. You use the same pattern. Basically what you're doing is you're threading with two pieces of leather. It's really one big string. It's uh, put in half, and I'll show you how you do that and how you bead this. But this is my latest project, and I thought I'd share it with you. I really liked how it turned out. I think it turned out really beautiful. 
the uh, little findings in there, the little, this big one right here, the silver one, you can make those uh, focal points in between your beading. And you have to have these little spacer circles right there in between the beads to complete your project to make it look tight and neat. So, we're going to show you how this was done. Stay tuned. Okay, now this is a piece of leather and it's very, very thin. Can you see how thin that is? Very, very thin. You try to find pieces of leather that's so thin that it will fit through your beads. And I like working with leather because it's just so strong and durable and it really makes the bracelet um, last a lot longer. So I usually always do leather strings and they come in long pieces they usually run about two dollars most places but that's what you use okay okay so this is the leather that you use and they it's pretty long <laughs> but when you're going to do a bracelet what you do is you put it in your hand and you go to about really maybe your chin about this long because you're going to be using it this long okay you're going to do it in half whatever that is and cut it from that point and you're going to be stringing with these two pieces so let's get on with that now when you are going to cut do it at an angle do it at a little slight angle so it makes a little point right there yeah do it like that okay that helps you be able to you know string your beads either it's at an angle so it kind of glides in there and it's a lot easier to to bead so um so like i said you got your long piece of leather or string you can use other things do it to about here your hands here to here and that's what you need for a bracelet and so you take it in half like this and this is going to be where you put your little latch, like I did the buttons. I'll show you how you do that. Hang on. Now, I, when I go to yard sales, I go look for those mason jars of all the grandmas and, you know, moms and everybody that used to sew, used to put them in mason jars. You can get a whole big old jar of buttons for hardly anything, and it just saves you money on fancy, cute little um, latches to your jewelry like you could do this one I mean it's just amazing all the different ones you could do you could just do anything you want any kind of button that really strikes your fancy like I did this one and you'll save a lot of money and you will have future projects yay <laughs> you can also use these these are great for beading as well. So I just thought I'd show you that. There's all kinds of alternatives that you can use to make jewelry and it's just fun. I just love being creative with this stuff. It's a blast. So you are gonna enjoy it too, I think. <laughs> now, if you're gonna be serious about beading, I would suggest getting some containers to put your beading materials in and have them organized. Like a lot of the beads that I like to use come in these little um, little cylinders and they're six millimeters and you can just, you know, get to them very easily this way. They also come in little packages and stuff like that. Here's some more um, leather that's thicker for other projects. But what I try to do, like here in this particular tray, I have my silver, my copper, my bronze and my gold in here and there's different things that you can use with all this to make jewelry and it's just it makes it so much easier if you're organized okay and here i have where i had the uh the different cords and a lot of times i had the leather in here like right here and over here i have some finished products and i have my buttons in there but the point is if you're going to try to do this be organized so it's not a big mess and that you can find things easily and you'll have a lot of fun. In fact, uh, these little containers, I'm going to plug, uh, I think it was Dollar General. These Sterilite, they probably have them at Walmart too. 
but they're divided cases and I think they were six or seven dollars but oh they are so worth it because they keep everything all together like this moves out and this whole section here is one piece and then this one over here moves out but uh so it won't spill over to the other compartments so just thought I'd share that with you and another thing that I found in my button full I mean my mason jar full of buttons was a marble <laughs> Remember these? <laughs> I thought it was cool. Interesting story about marbles that you would have never known about with me. Um, when I was, I think I was three, I think I was about three or four, somewhere in there. And a bunch of my friends, we were all playing marbles. And I was really having fun with it, you know. We had the circle and we're shooting and all this kind of stuff. Well, I was so into it that I didn't hear everybody telling me to get out of the way because my parents were getting their propane filled <laughs> and um, the truck was backing up. Well, I was so little that he did not see me. And so what happened is I got knocked over and then it ran over my legs. Well, it was a good thing that uh, the sand was soft there because what it did, it, it just pushed my legs into the soft sand. And so my legs were not broken, but they were all freaking out. Of course, I wet my pants. I was crying, you know, and they get me and they're like running inside and I'm this big wet mess crying my eyes out. Yeah, people, over a marble. <laughs> they're playing marbles. Memories. <laughs> It's just is so funny. It just reminded me of that. Anyway, you got to you got to find out a little tiny secret about me being stubborn and not listening. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the things you kind of find in your buttons. <laughs> a marble that did a flashback. Okay. I think I am going to do these little purple beads that I saw the other day. Oh, they're just so cute. Let's see how much are these. These were $1.95. This is the size that I'm telling you that I like. They have big enough holes that you can string a leather through. And that's what I, it's always six millimeter, you know, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, I think I'm going to do something purple today. So let me find the right button or attachment for the end, okay? Okay, don't know if you can really see that, but it's birds around a bird bath. It's just a cool, unique looking button. That's going to be my little fix there on the end. So we'll do that. And all you do, you go through the button, string it up, make it be so that it's halfway down like that. So you have it at the end. Whoops. And I just let it go through. <laughs> Didn't hold it. Okay. We're leaving all the bloopers in. All right. Here we go again. Thread it through. And there we go. <laughs> okay. So hold it tightly when you're going to when you're going to tie this knot. So as closely as you can right there, you're going to make a knot. So you just go around the circle. Pull it through to make a knot and slide it as close as you can to the button. It's get in there. Sometimes you have to maneuver a little bit slowly, inch by inch, so that it'll be really taut and tight. And then you pull on it. And there you go. You've got a little knot. So that's the first step. That's going to be beautiful. Okay. Now for the beads. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you need a beading tray or a washcloth. You can put a washcloth on, uh, on a table, but I like the beading tray because they're usually like velvet lined so that you can put your beads in here and pick them up easier to bead. Now you just lay your piece in here, put your beads in there, and um, it's just easier to manipulate and the beads won't be going everywhere. So a beading tray, they're usually about a couple bucks they're not very expensive anyway a beading tray or you can do 
you know, a napkin or a washcloth on a table because that will hold the beads so they don't go crazy everywhere. Now, if you don't want to do a, but a excuse me, a button for your, you know, in catch, you can also do like lobster claws, um, any kind of in pieces. Let me show you real quick. I have so much silver. Here's the lobster claws. These are the lobster claws. You can just simply the same way, put your loop through there and knot it and you've got your lobster claw. Okay? You can do so many things. It's just your creativity. So that's what's so cool about it. All right. Also, you need tools. <laughs> like um, little pliers so that you can maybe pull the string through the bead if it gets stuck. Um, if you need to cut little pieces of uh, your fabric, you can do that. And the same thing with scissors. But anyway, this little tool right here comes in handy a lot for different projects. They just come up, you know, it's just interesting. So you need tools <laughs> along with your beads and everything else. Okay, so I put a little napkin in my beading tray so you can see better. And we're gonna pour the beads out for it to get started. And then these are the little spacers that you need to have in between. And I'll show you what you're gonna do. And since I have the gold button, I thought it would be nice to do purple and gold. All right, let's see how that works out. Okay, now when I'm going to start this right here, the very beginning, this is what it started like right here. I usually put a little finding, a little pretty finding there and then start my beading. So I am going to use a little gold ball. <laughs> and what you do is you just put this little gold ball all through the two little leather. You put it through both, okay? The bead, the one bead. Because it's kind of like an accentuated little... Um, you know, start, and then you start your beating of the small beads, so. So, get through there, pull it all the way, and there you go, you got something started. And now we're gonna do the purple beads. So what you do, you take one side, and you take a bead, and you put it through the hole, all the way down. So it's right there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of those little tiny, little round things that I showed you, they're spacers, and you're gonna go again, you're gonna go through both of the leather with this, this uh, little spacer. So you do that. Let it go down, and then you're gonna go on the opposite side. You did a bead over this way, now we need to put one on this side. So, you take a bead. I got a fly flying around me. <laughs> you know how I love flies. <laughs> Remember that video? <laughs> anyway, let me get it, there we go. And then you put it there, and you're starting, oops, you're starting your process, okay? Now you need another spacer, another ring on both of them. So you're alternating is what you're doing. This is so simple, isn't it? I bet you didn't think it was this simple. It is! Eureka! <laughs> I love things when they're easier and they're fun, so... This is uh, just a fun thing to do. Let me get it in here. One side, let's get the other. Slide it down. And so what happens is you've got it alternated. See there? Let me see if I can get it close for you to see. All right, one bead on one side, one bead on the other, spacers are going in between them, that's how it works. And you keep continuing till you get the right size you want. You just keep going. And you know, like with this, when I did the little gold ball right there, you could do like maybe four, six, eight, 
in progression of these purple beads and then you can stop and you can put a little gold bead in between them and make your own design. You can, that's you. You get to do whatever you want to do. That's what's fun. So, but if you just wanted the plain beading, you know, that fly, ah! <laughs> that little beading right like this, you could do the whole bracelet just like that if you wanted to, or if you want to have spacers, pretty spacers in between, you can do that as well. See how easy that is? Bet you guys didn't think it was that easy. It is. So, anyway, let me work on this a little bit because I don't think you just want to sit, see me just beating little beads. We'll show you how it goes. All right, hang on. Okay, and another thing I wanted to show is um, when you get these, uh, these little packets from all the different gym places, you know, and these little things like this, it is easier if you can put them in little clear containers. You can see them faster instead of sifting through a bunch of bags. <laughs> That's why I got these. Now, the good thing about this, these usually cost a lot of money in like a gym store or a jewelry store for, for this, for beading. I found these, get a handful hit, get a helpful hint here. These, see these are bigger, these are littler, these are a dollar a bag at Dollar Tree, okay? I love that place. I'm always saving money there, but I was so thrilled that they had these little storage containers so that I could keep my beading a lot more organized and see what the heck I'm doing and where things are at. So, there you go. Good tip, huh? Another, th another thing I wanted to show you is that these little spacers in between here, sometimes they have a gap. And so you want to tighten them. You know, they're like little jump rings. You tighten them and um, so that they all look universal and that there's not a gap so it won't come out or, you know, catch on to clothes or whatever. So if they have a little opening, just get your little pliers and you just tighten them. And that way you won't catch on your clothes. It will have a better look. It'll be all nice and um, neat and uniform and won't have these gaps in there looking weird. So that's a good tip too. So remember to do that. Okay, now there's the button and there's the one bead that we put over two strings of leather and then we alternated with the two strings back and forth and putting jump rings in between each of those purple beads. And the pattern that I did this time was 12, a bead, 12, a bead, 12, a bead, 12, a bead. Okay? Now, this is the part where you tie another loop at the end here. Whoop! Getting a little in focus there. Okay. Um, you tie a little loop as close as you can to that last bead, and then we're going to make a space in between so that the button over here can loop into it. All right? Okay, now I've got that knotted there on that last bead, and then I spaced it for the button to hook in there, and I did another knot. Now this ending here, I've got a little bit left. I can make a pretty little, um, kind of like a, a little tail with beads and kind of jazz it up, jazz the bracelet up a little bit more. So we'll do that next. Okay, now this is the finished product. It uh, has the loop where the button went in there. We tied a knot at the other end and did it just like we did the others. You tie a knot. You make a big bead, and I did four little purple beads for the tail, and then put another bead on there, and then I tied it again, and then at the very, very end, what you do is you, um, you tighten it and pull it as hard as you can, but then you s cut slantways at the end to give it a pretty little distinctive look. So there you go. Now you know how to make one of these bracelets. I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so that's the end of this show. 
little video on making a bracelet beaded like this. Isn't it cool? I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will be doing other things in the future, some more cooking and some other types of beading. So just stay tuned. And, you know, my life is about being a nomad. So everything that I have got going on around here, I'll share that with you because I love living in my shuttle bus. This is my shuttle bus in here. This is Shuttle Bay, and I'm the Beach Cricket. All right. See you guys in the next vi video. <laughs> I can't even talk. Um, wake up and live. Have your adventures. Bye.